guys. TGIF. I hope you're having a good Friday. If you are watching on the replay, thank you. I'm going to give it just a minute to see if we are live and make sure that I have. Hmm. I'm not seeing anybody. Let's see if you guys can see me. Say hello. Oh, I see some people joining. It's not coming up. Don't you love it? Every time I start a video, it's the same. There we go. All right. Well, hello, you guys. I hope you've had a great week. Hi, Gina. How are you? Hi, Alessandra. Good to see you, too. Hello. All right. So... This week, we're doing more Valentine treats, you guys. I feel like this needs to be it. I Y'all are probably sick of Valentine's now. I could do Valentine's Day week after week after week. Hello, Kathy. Hello, Vicki. Thank you for joining. Hi, Sarah. I just saw you that you commented about our um, after onstage event. It's actually going to be before onstage event. For those of you that are Stampin' Up! demonstrators, we have... Um, an event put on by Stamping Up twice a year, um, and the next one is in Fort Worth. Um, well, one of them is in Fort Worth, and so my friend Kay and I like to organize an additional event to go with those that are that are local to us. So I've been getting lots of questions, so if that is you, yes, just know Kay and I have something big in the works, and we are really trying to finalize. I think we've got it finalized, but we're going to be announcing it within hours i'm telling you it's we're so close we just got to sign a contract um with our event space and then we will be ready to advertise and let you guys know it's going to be great we're going to have lots of space a lot more space than last time so um we're excited okay so we've got lots of people on hello elaine trisha it's good to see you guys hi christine all right so valentine's this week again and i think like i said i think maybe next week it'll be time for me to move on <laughs> for valentine's i think you guys are probably like enough already um but just to remind you every week i type up these lists um with all the products um, that i'm using for each project it has the item numbers and then below it'll have the measurements that you need and this one's on this side there will be a link to this directly on my blog underneath the third photo so when you see that photo right under there it'll say you can download the project sheets here so you're welcome to save those print them do whatever you'd like um, if you would like to order some of these products or any products if you get your order in by Monday night I'll send you all three make and take kits for free so um, be on the lookout for that information it should be uploading on my blog right now all right, before we get started, I've got some prizes and some other things, a couple of things to tell you. Um, I do want to remind you that I have one class to go left in January, and it is this class. It's called the um, Picture Perfect Birthday Class. And the I actually put the, the information on the back of your PDF here, and I said that the deadline is Monday, but it's actually Wednesday. So you actually have a, a few more days. Um, but it is, there are four different options. The option that has everything, including the stamp set, the pack of paper, the pack of ribbon, the pack of sequins, and six projects is $59. And you get to pick a celebration item. Um, the other option is for those of you that already have this stamp set, you can get everything else for $39. Um, you'll need the paper, the sequins, the ribbon to make all your projects. And there are six projects. Some of them are treat holders. Um, there's a couple of cards, a gift card holder. Um, but they all use this really fun paper and the sequins and, of course, the stamp set. The third option is for PDF only. You can um, find that link there also. Um, that's $15, and it's an immediate download. They email it to you immediately. And then the fourth option is for my downline. They get all the make and takes for $12. So that's another benefit for buying the starter kit, you guys. have had a lot of people take advantage of that here in the last couple of weeks because they want to have access to the make and takes. My team just buys all the product they're, they're under their own order, their own um, demonstrator number, and they get it, their discount. And then I send them the make and takes and the PDF. Um, so if you are someone who consistently buys my classes, that may be a really good option for you. The starter kit is $99. 
um, free shipping. You get $125 of product of your choice. Um, plus, during celebration, you get two stamp sets. So that information is right there. If you're looking for that and you would like to have access to my classes, and they always get PDFs for free. Every month, I send them a link with all the PDFs um, for all my classes. So if you're somebody who really likes to take advantage of all of that, um, let me know and I can um, give you more details or send you that link. Okay, so let's talk about Prize Patrol. Um, last week, I had two stamp sets. All right, here they are. I'm not gonna show the names yet. So every week I give away something. Last week I had two somethings. Um, this fortunate to know you stamp set is going to my friend Belinda. Um, I swear you guys, these are randomly selected by Raffle Copter and Belinda was just at my house yesterday. If I had only known yesterday, I could have given it to her. So Belinda, um, congratulations. You're getting the fortunate to know you stamp set. And then this fun one, Cozy Cottage Hostess set, Debbie Hughes. Debbie, I have your mailing address, so I will put this in the mail to you. Congratulations, ladies. Now you guys, I'm giving away free prizes every week and there's no... I mean, there's no, nothing you have to do. You don't have to buy anything. You just have to go enter. And if you join my mailing list, you actually get five entries into the giveaway. So that's a, an added bonus. This week I'm giving away Happy Easter. This stamp set has been on my desk for a week. I'm designing my Easter class right now. I'm one project away from being done. It'll be one of my February classes because Easter is in March. So you'll need to get all of this about a month ahead of time. Um, you should see the, the people at Target when I buy Easter candy, the looks they're giving me when it's the first week of January. But luckily they had it. And so I was able to get started on my Easter designs. Um, okay, so this is the giveaway this week. Go over to my blog, that same post, and enter the raffle copter. Oh, I'm seeing all your comments. I'm sorry, I was looking at my phone and my phone doesn't show the comments and now I see you guys over here. Um, hi everybody, welcome, thank you. Um, so anyway, go over, enter, and I will give this away next Friday during Facebook Friday. All right, I think we're ready to stamp. Let me get a drink. And we're gonna get started with this cute little box. Now I decided to try to use other sets that weren't traditionally Valentine sets. All right, you guys, I'm going to make you, I'm going to straighten you up a little bit. You look a little crooked. I cannot stand when I see the replay and my camera is crooked. So hold on. Sorry for the wiggling. Let's see. Okay. There we go. There we go. All right. Anyways, this giant thing here, I forgot to tell you, that's the hostess code you use to get the three make and takes for free, okay? It's here and it's on my blog and it's also over on my um, PDF. Okay, so here is the project we're gonna make. I was at Target and I bought every Valentine treat they had. My kids are very excited. <laughs> and so I thought these were cute and I really like the size of them. They're not a full granola bar, they're like a little mini. So I got these and that's what this box holds. Um, and you know what? In this box is 28, which I like because that's enough for a class set. And see, it just holds that cute little tiny baby granola bar. And my girls have been in my office and like raiding my candy and my uh, Valentine treats. And I have been doing it too, and it has got to stop. So that's why I've got to move on to Valentine's Day. I've got to get all this junk out of my office um, because my get back on track January has not gotten back on track. All right, so here's the little, here's the box. This is what it looks like, Target. I'm sure you can find them other places. It's that, Nate, no, Quaker granola bars. All right, so let's do, let's make the box first. You're gonna need, and again, right here on the PDF is the information, okay? You're gonna need a five and a fourth by five and a half piece of real red cardstock. And you're gonna need something to score it with. I prefer the Simply Scored. Our Stampin' Trimmer also scores, so if you have that, that's good. Um, we're gonna start with a short side, and you have to look because it's five and a fourth by five and a half. It's almost a square, um, so you have to make sure you get on the short side. And the short side, we're gonna score at three-fourths of an inch, two and a fourth, three, and four and a half. And then we're gonna turn it, and on the long side, see this is the five and a half inch side, we're gonna score it at three fourths and four and three fourths. All right, set that aside for a few minutes. And now we're gonna do all the little cutting. 
you can see that it's we've got this three quarter inch tab on both of these sides this is the short this is the short side okay we're gonna cut off the squares on one of the sides just go ahead and cut them off okay in this tab we're actually gonna cut at an angle it'll help it go down into the box a little bit better all right now let's go along let me start back where I was and we're gonna trim we're just gonna snip all of these score lines up to the horizontal score line all right now you want to just burnish all your lines go ahead and fold them all in if you have your bone folder handy which I have mine here because we're going to use it in a minute but it's buried all right so there we go and let me grab fast fuse I did have it over here in my defense but then I started working on another project and I took it away okay so we're going to here this is the lid the part that we um, trimmed that little skinny edge right there that's the lid so we're, we're not going to do that in we're going to do these this other end and we're going to put some adhesive on the outside of these little square tabs and this is going to create the bottom of the box and we're going to fold them in and make them um, even with that side tab right there okay and there's your basic box now what I like to do, because see how these kind of make it tricky to fold that in? I like to cut them down. Just make them about half the width. And it doesn't have to be exact. I'm just going to fold those in. Oh, come on. Why is it being difficult for me today? there we go all right there's your box let's put the granola in there and then I can struggle to close it again usually I find that if once the box is full it does seem to close down better okay there it is a cute little box and if you don't have those granola bars other little candies would go hi everybody hi Denise I hope you're feeling better all right so here's a piece of our um, Petal Passion designer series paper. It's black and white. I love it. It's very versatile. Two and a half by five and a fourth. And we're going to make a belly band so we don't want to adhere it to the box because we want it to slide off. So I'm just going to wrap it around, pinching it along those corners there. All right, until it meets in the back. And I'm going to put some fast fuse. Uh oh, I got a little on the box. We don't want that but I do want to adhere it to itself, just like that. That way, it'll slide off, okay? All right, so I think I mentioned that I really was gonna try to focus on non-Valentine stamps that you could use to make your Valentine projects. And this stamp set is in the annual catalog, and I have used it a bunch. It's so cute. I actually have a whole class that I did in the fall with this stamp set. But we're gonna use this cute little heart here. Um, and if you notice, guys, I don't put my stickers on my stamps. How many of you put your stickers on your stamps? I'm curious. I used to when I got my stamps. That was the first thing I did. I put all the stickers on. And I never do it anymore. And I forget to tell people that you can put the stickers on the back of your stamps so that you can see where you're stamping. But I'm kind of, I've kind of gotten out of that habit. So you can see this one doesn't have the sticker. But this one actually does for some reason. I don't know why when I pulled it out it actually did have a sticker. But I think that they stick better without the stickers. And you guys probably know that. And Stampin' Up! knows that too. They are aware. It's something that they're working on. Um, this one, if yours doesn't stick very well and you've put the stickers on it, you can put a little bit of Tombow glue on it and let the Tombow glue dry. Because then it's, it's tacky and it'll stick. I've also used um, glue dots too sometimes to do that. So just a little tip there. All right, so I'm going to use Memento, Tuxedo Memento. What's it called? Memento Tuxedo Black Ink. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm going to use my blend, my Stampin' Blends, my light cherry cobbler Stampin' Blends to color that hard in. And that's the ink, that's the black ink that you need to use when you are using your Stampin' Blends because the others... The other, like our archival ink, will smear. Um, you know what I have been doing in the last couple of weeks is with the blends, I have found that our regular ink, so let's say I'm using a cherry cobbler 
um, blends. And if I stamped this in the Cherry Cobbler ink, it colors in very nicely. It actually kind of works well together. So you might want to experiment with that. I, I have not read or seen anything official about using our other inks with the blends, but it worked well for me. Okay, so now, you guys, we're gonna fussy cut, and I'm gonna grab my tiny little scissors. It is much easier to fussy cut with tiny scissors. The bigger the scissors, the harder it is. And no, these do not have framelits. I know, that's our first question, right? Does it have framelits? It's like, we don't know what to do if it doesn't have a framelit. It hasn't been very long that Stampin' Up! has actually even had framelits or that framelits even were a thing. When I first started, and I've been a demonstrator for eight years, there was no such thing. So we have to go back old school to the olden days when we cut, when we cut with scissors. I know, it's very, it's very old timey. Okay, now where's that circle? Right here. This is that fancy, can you see it? That fancy foil acetate. Um, it's like a window sheet, and it's gold on one side and silver on the other side. And um, I cut it out with, what did I cut it out with? It's on here, oh, a circle, <laughs> a circle uh, framelit. All right, so now dimensionals, of course. We're gonna put the dimensional on there. And the sentiment, I love you, Watson Watts. Where's my real red? It was here. Oh, is it right here in front of me, you guys? Where is it? Seriously, it was right here. Because I'm using, am I looking at it, you guys? Real red, real red. Did I use it earlier and put it away? I did. See, that's what happens. I set up for Facebook Friday in the morning. I'm totally ready. And then I start making other things. And I pull, I pull out of my supply and I forget to put it back. All right, so love you, Watts and Watts. And I'm gonna make this a flag. And I actually don't want it to be that long, so I'm gonna just snip a little bit. And to make my flag, I'm gonna do a little cut in the middle and then diagonal. Oop, that's too long. And diagonal meet in the middle, okay? That'll help you get a more even V on the end. And I'm gonna tuck it in the back like that. All right, let's close that real red up before we have some kind of catastrophe with it. Now I'm gonna do a couple of things here. This is the new Organza white um, ribbon, and it is on the same page as this designer series paper, the Petal Passion Suite, if that's what it's called. And I can't stop using this ribbon either because it just goes with everything. It's white, it's easy to tie, it's light, and it's great. So I've been using it a ton. All right, mm, I don't like that bow, let's start again. If you get a bow that you don't like, just start again. The thing is, is to keep these flat here, to not let them twist. You want them to be going the same direction as the little legs. All right, let's cut these at an angle. And last embellishment is a gold library clip. I do love me some gold library clips too. I have about 10 packs of them because I use them a lot. All right, I'm just gonna clip that on there. Now I'm not done. You could be done if you wanted to, but I wanted that, I don't know if you guys can see, I want that there, now you can see, I want that to be shiny. Okay, so I'm gonna take my fine tip glue pen, which you guys know I don't use very often because I'm a mess with it. I'm just not a very steady hand, but I'm gonna use it kind of as a, a top coat. And the thing that I've learned when you're doing this is you do not want it very thick, because if it's very thick, it'll kind of dry opaquey. And that might be a little bit too thick, but just do a drop and kind of spread it around with a tip and let it dry, okay? And the other important um, thing to remember when you are doing this is to set it far away from where you are crafting because something will land in it and then it won't be very pretty. Don't ask me how I know that 200 times. All right, project number one, done. Hope you guys like it. That can be adapted too. You know, if you think about the other stamps in here, 
I mean, you could do that as a thank you. You could do it as Christmas even. I mean, those could even be Christmas colors or do different colors. Um, I just, I, this is a very versatile set that I think that you need if you don't have it. Oh my gosh, all the hearts. Thank you guys. I love it. I forget to look what you guys are saying. You never had the rubber stamps. Use my old scissors from Creative Memories. Yeah, <laughs> I know. These are the best. These, I think they're 10 bucks. They're called paper snips and they, they really are the best. We used to have these giant scissors that I still love, but, but you cannot fussy cut with these. Okay, next project. Can you guess what is in this project? I mean, in this box. Something else from Tarjay. Archer Farms, Valentine's Monster Trail Mix. My littlest daughter loves trail mix, and so I'm always buying these for her. This is a Target's brand, Archer Farms, and so there's always a coupon on their website, or on their app, and I buy her these, and she loves these for snacks. So, as soon as I saw Valentine's, I was like, yes, please, we are taking those home. Now, this box is similar to the box we did last week that uses the Love Notes box framelit, but it's smaller. So, you can see it opens and closes similarly, but it is smaller so that it fits this little thing perfectly. I like to design the boxes so that they fit on here just right. All right, so let's make the box first and then we'll make the tag with that adorable little embroidery hoop. Those are really cute. All right, let, let me look at my notes so that I can tell you the right measurements. Real red cardstock that is 10 and a half by three and three fourths. And we're gonna measure the short side at half an inch. I've got my hair flowing around in here. Half an inch and, let me look, three and a fourth. So basically half an inch from either side. And then on the long side, we're gonna do four and a half, and we're gonna do five, and we're gonna do nine and a half. Oh, ignore all my little things. I always store them over on the right side. I know they could go in here, but that would require more work on my part to actually open them and put them away. <laughs> okay, so this box is going to, it lays out flat, it's just going to come together kind of like a clamshell. So that is how I designed this one. We're going to trim these little doodads in the middle, just like we have done before on the other one. Up here, trim and trim. But again, just like we did on the previous box, we're gonna cut that square off, cut that square off, and cut these at an angle. Okay, just like that. All right, so now we're going to, let's fold all these, burnish them. These little guys, I'm gonna cut them in half again like we did before so that they will poke down in that box a little bit easier. Before I put it together, I'm going to make a little, I like to make this little, I don't know, this little dip right here. It makes it getting the treat a little bit easier. So I'm going to use a one and three fourths punch. And I'm going to, if you're concerned about getting this centered perfectly, then get out your ruler and put a dot in the middle. If I was going to be a perfectionist, that's what I would do. Um, but I'm going to eyeball it. We're going to, we're going to hope for the best. Now see, I'm only doing about, what, a fourth of the circle? And I'm gonna punch just like that. I'm gonna do that the same to the, to the paper here too. Here's the designer series paper. It goes right here. So we're gonna hope and wish for the best, which if you are a perfectionist, I don't recommend. Let's see, let's see. Is it gonna match? And it's a match. All right, good. So let's put some adhesive on the back. This is that same Petals. Why can't I remember the name of that? Petal Passion. Petal Passion. It's only the middle of January. I'll know it by, by April. Okay, so let's see. Oh, did I put up? No, no, I did it right. Okay, so you put it on this side. Now we're going to fold this all the way up like this. I'm going to tuck these little guys in because they're just going to be on the inside. And I'm going to put the adhesive right here on the tabs that are on the front. It's on the back of the this. This is the front side. And I'm gonna fold it up. 
and they should, if I measured and scored correctly, they should line up perfectly like that. All right, and there's your box. And let's get our little Valentine Monster Mix and put in and close up our box. Ta-da! Easy peasy. Okay, now let's make the tag. This tag, the star of this tag, are these adorable mini embroidery hoops. They come in two sizes, and there are eight in a pack. And I have actually been stocking up on these because I knew that I was going to use them a lot. And quite honestly, I was afraid that they were going to go in back order, which they haven't. They're not even on low inventory, anything. Stamping Up has done a wonderful job so far with all of our new products, keeping them in stock. So we're going to use the big one. Okay, look, it's just like a regular embroidery hoop, and it is so cute. I just love it. Um, okay, so we're going to use that. We're going to use, I used the smallest circle, stitch circle framelit to cut a gold circle. And we're going to punch with that same circle punch, a one and three fourths circle. And you know, after I designed this, you probably could skip that step because we're gonna layer it right here on top of a starburst, a whisper white starburst. This is the starburst punch. But I'm just gonna stick with what I did. All right, now, good night. I have forgotten that step too. Oh my. Goodness gracious. Well, luckily, it is right here. I was really proud of myself this morning. I got up early. I was super organized, but apparently, it must have been too early. Heart happiness again. This is this is probably a tradition. Well, I don't know. It doesn't say Happy Valentine's Day. You can use hearts all year long. So, we're not going to call it a we're not going to call it a um Valentine set because I will be using it all year long. All right, we're going to stamp that heart in real red on real red cardstock. So tone on tone, if you can see it. And the framelits that coordinate are called Sweet and Sassy. And there's two different shaped hearts in that set. And there is this shape which i think is kind of more of a modern heart i don't know more curvy and the other one's more like a straight heart um, but there's a bunch of sizes in both but i tend to always use this heart i use this one and the tiny one and the one right above it a lot and not just with the stamps i use them by themselves all right so there's our heart hello belinda i see belinda is just joined us Belinda I don't know if you were here in the beginning but you want a prize all right let's put it all together okay I'm gonna no I'm not gonna glue first because if I glue first I'll make a giant mess we gotta layer up with dimensionals there's that oh. <laughs> let's try that again there is that and then the gold and then that, another one, and that real red heart's gonna go right there. Now, for this guy, he is going to, I don't know why he's a he, but he is going to be glued on with that fine tip glue pen, which I told you guys is an awesome adhesive, but it scares me because I'm a mess. I'm gonna just go around and put some tiny, itty bitty, I'm hardly not even squeezing, the, the glue. I think that's my problem is that I squeeze too much glue out. So just all around. And I'm going to very carefully lay this down on there. All right. Phew. And then some more dimensionals right here. And we will, let's see if I can slide it. I probably should have done that first and set it right there. All right, and it's gonna go in the center of our box with, guess what? Two more dimensionals. I know, it's ridiculous. I keep the dimensional business open solely by myself. All right, look, it's so cute. But, you know, it's gotta have a heart, I mean, a, a bow. Basic black baker's twine. 
tie a little bow and snip snip and we're going to do this with a glue dot just like that so cute so the, these little embroidery hoops if you see them in the catalog there's a stamp set they're called a good day i think and all the little stamps will fit inside these little embroidery hoops and there's also punches that will punch little scallop circles if you saw my card yesterday on my blog which i should have pulled out thanks for the hearts guys um they the little scallops fit inside it's just a really cute little set so so there is project number two all right let me move all this out of the way and we will move on to project number three Hopefully, I have everything I need for project number three. Seems like both projects so far, I've had to run and grab something. All right, all the trash. I have trash can this week. All right, and a drink. Thank you guys for the sweet comments, thank you. I know, it's so cute, I love Valentine's Day stuff. All right, the next one is going to be using the fruit basket bundle, the little strawberries. Oh my gosh. And I was inspired once again. Can you guess where? At Target. Now these you can get anywhere because since I bought them at Target, I've seen them at CVS, I've seen them at Walmart, they're everywhere. Everywhere the Ghirardelli is sold. And um, Target actually had these little, um, uh, these dollar boxes, because Ghirardelli can be kind of pricey. But I thought two for a dollar was good if you didn't need like 50 in the big bag. So that's what we're using and it's strawberry bark. I found a lot of strawberry flavored things. So stay tuned. There's a lot of strawberry projects coming your way. All right. So we are once again going to use the Petal Passions Designer Series paper. We're going to make a little pocket. I don't know what this is called. I feel like in my mind it's called the diaper fold pocket. That may be wrong. That sounds kind of weird. I don't know if I'd want my treats coming in a diaper, but I think that's what it's called. All right, so <laughs> I'm using the paper that's more white this time than black. Six by six. You can do this with any square piece of paper. Um, and it's just folding. So we're going to fold corner to corner. And look, I brought my bone folder. I remembered. So make that nice and crisp. And then we're gonna take these and we're gonna kind of cross its arms like this. I always have to kind of look at it to see where it's centered. Okay, so I'm folding them both up. I'm gonna fold that one right across like that. And this one's gonna go across, it's folding its arms. Diaper, am I right, you guys? Diaper, <laughs> legit name, diaper pocket. Yeah, I know, it's kind of weird. Okay, so I folded those. No adhesive. You're just going to take this and you're going to fold it down. Okay, see how there were two pieces there? Just fold it down. And then it just stays. No adhesive needed. I love it. All right, so there is your basic construction. Those are good. Those, If you've got to make 100 of something, this is your, this is your project. You want to do these. All right, so let's do the stamping. This is the stamp set. It's called Fruit Basket. If you've seen some of the things online so far or seen the things that I've done, it's got four punches. It's got a pear, a strawberry, a watermelon, and a pineapple. And you can like build all these cute little fruits. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to use the little shopping basket and smoky slate. And I'm just going to do work towards the bottom because that's where I'm going to punch. I feel like my camera's pointing up high today. I try to usually work below that little sign and it seems like I'm pointed quite high. All right, and here is the handle. Now the strawberries, I decided to do them in Melon Mambo, because why not, right? All right, so we're gonna, we're gonna stamp one here and one here. And actually, we're going to punch, uh, stamp another one because we're going to punch it. So there's one there. And then the little strawberry um, tops. I can't remember. Is that what they're called? Strawberry tops. I'm going to do them in Old Olive. And I'm trying to get right on top so I line this up right. There we go. Oh, so cute. My bunny loves 
the green parts of the strawberry. So we always save those for her. She loves them. All right. Now, before I punch, I'm going to use this just for you. And this is from, I think, Teeny Tiny Wishes, unless it's another rogue. Let's see. I'm going to make sure I'm stamping straight before, because this is a wood block. There we go. Okay. So we're going to stamp there. Did I do some hearts? Oh, I did some hearts too. Um, if you guys were with me a couple weeks ago, you know that I pulled a stamp out of my Teeny Tiny Wishes and stamped it. I was so proud of it. And I put it in the supplies. And then it was brought to my attention that it wasn't from Teeny Tiny Wishes. It was from a stamp set that retired a long time ago. So it was a rogue stamp. But I think that one is in. I didn't look. So if it's not in that Teeny Tiny Wishes, it's not supposed to be. Sorry. All right. There we go. How about some little hearts? Yeah, four. I think that's good. Okay. I know. This is a pretty good favor to give out. I think so, too, Crystal. I agree. All right. This is two-inch punch, circle punch, and it's just barely going to fit that basket. See how it's even cutting off a little bit of the bottom, but that's okay. There we go. And then here's the, the fun part, the teeny tiny little strawberry punch. When you buy the fruit basket stamp set, you can buy it as a bundle where you get all four, four punches um, with it at a 10% discount. So look for that if you want to get this. Notice how the stamp is bigger than the punch. That is on purpose. Um, Stamping Up has, sometimes you have a stamp where you punch it and it has a white outline. These were made larger so that your punch, there is no white matte outline, it's solid, okay? So don't get confused by that. Some people do get confused and think that the punch doesn't um, match, but it does, it's on purpose. But you can see that when you stamp the strawberry, it is quite larger than the uh, punched one. Now I went ahead and took my Wink of Stella and just made them sparkly because why not? I would like a sparkly strawberry, I'd eat it. My girls sure do love strawberries. We go through a lot. All right, let's put it on a gold foil scallop circle. This is from the Layering Circle Framelits. Thanks, guys. Y'all are so sweet. All right, there we go. And, oh, we need a bow, a tiny bow for the handle of the shopping cart. And so with my twine... I'm gonna make it so that it's not too big. I'm gonna pull like that and like that so that those little loops are tiny. Okay, there we go. And a glue dot, yay, I had everything I needed for this project. No running around. Let's see, this side or that side? Oh, I think that side. All right, and then just a couple of dimensionals to hold it on. This would be a great thing to make for your kid's class. Um, office treats because it's quick and easy and you can put different candy in here I mean I think any any of the little candies would fit but there you go project number two done all right let's review <laughs> in my teacher voice let's review what we learned today um, remember if you want ooh, let's look and see if this is dry here's my when I set it over in the window I'm not going to touch it. It doesn't look dry yet. Um, if you want all three of these make and takes, you all you have to do is spend $30 with me by the end of Monday. Use that hostess code. That's the only way I know that you want to get the make and takes. If your order is over $150, don't use that hostess code. And I will automatically send you these because I will want to send them as a thank you when I see your order come in. Um... Next week is a weird week for me. Monday and Tuesday, my kids are showing their animals at our livestock show here in um, Holotus. My little girls have rabbits and my big girl has a goat. So I will be gone all Monday and Tuesday. And I usually try to um, cut these on Tuesday morning and have them out Tuesday afternoon or Wednesday morning. So next week is going to be a little crazy. These are probably won't go out till Thursday or Friday. So just know, please be patient with me that I, I won't forget they're coming and they're just going to be a little bit later than normal. 
Um, okay, so there's that. The, the PDF is over my blog, pinkbuckaroo.com. The hostess code is there. Grab your Valentine's things. We only have um, a few more weeks until Valentine's Day to get these started. Um, I want you guys to give me some ideas. We don't have necessarily any specific holidays coming up. Um, what do you want to see? What stamp sets? What techniques? What kinds of projects do you want to see? Please give me suggestions. Um, over on that raffle copter, um, don't forget to go enter. And that's one of the questions I'm asking is that, you know, do you have any suggestions? Do you have any ideas? Um, yes, Easter will be coming. I promise I'll be working on Easter projects, um, but that probably will come later, maybe end of February, that, that um, time frame. Okay, so I think that's it. Thanks, you guys. Um, I appreciate all of you. We've got a big group today. I just love seeing you guys. And don't worry, Terry, it's going to upload and be available for replay and then I'll put it on my blog. You can watch the whole thing. Um, St. Patrick's Day ideas. Oh, Rosemary. Okay. I don't ever do anything for St. Patrick's Day. That'll be kind of a challenge. I'll have to, I'll have to think about that. Um, I don't know. We don't really do St. Patrick's Day here. I don't know my local friends, right? Is it just me that doesn't do St. Patrick's Day or is it just kind of in our area? When I lived in Savannah, I remember it being a really big deal in Savannah. We lived there for our first year when we were married. Um, so I'm gonna have to do some research, but that's a good suggestion. Um, if you're interested in St. Patrick's, let me know if we have a, a good number of you. I will definitely look for that. Rainbow set, Denise, I know. It's my favorite, but it's kind of intimidating. I don't know, I'm feeling a little like I don't know. I just need to. I just need to start that in the barn door. I I am in love with both of those, but I'm a little bit um, nervous too because they have so many pieces. But that's what's going to make it fun, right? A shamrock out of hearts. Yes, Laurie, I have done that before. Yes, I'm glad you said that. That reminds me. All right, you guys. I'm going to um, read all of your comments. Yes, Trisha, that would be cute. And then I will see you again next Friday. Remember, be patient with me. I'll be out of the office all Monday and Tuesday with my kids. And say a little prayer for us that we survive selling our, our little animals. All right, you guys. Have a wonderful weekend. Let me know if you have questions. And don't forget to get your orders in and enter for, your, for my giveaway. All right. Thanks, guys. I'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye.